One of the great things about spectral cytometry is the ability to capture the autofluorescent signature of the cells of interest and extract that out of your sample. Today I'm going to show you one panel here, it's our 16 color demo panel, and show you what autofluorescence extraction can do to enhance the resolution in this particular example. The data here has already been unmixed, but the autofluorescence has not been extracted. I can see this in the data when I look at some of the plots here. So this one where I have e 450 on the y-axis, you can see my negatives are showing up between 10 to the 3rd and 10 to the 4th on this bi-exponential scale, pretty far away from, from 0. Also the plot below it is showing an alexafluor 488, also showing up around 10 to the 3rd, between 10 to the 3rd and 10 to the 4th. Another way you can look at the autofluorescence and assess whether it's worth removing it or not is if you go to your unstained cells tube and view that in the default raw worksheet. Here I've got P1 on my lymphocytes and I'm showing P1 on this spectral plot here. Now when I look across all of the channels shown here on the x-axis, I can see in places like V6, V7, V8 on the violet laser, there's quite a lot of fluorescence coming from these unstained cells, somewhere between 10 to the 3rd and 10 to the 4th. And when I go down to the blue array, there's a little bit of autofluorescence signal here as well, just over 10 to the 3rd in the B2, B3 area, which are the peak channels for dyes like Alexafluor 488. So, if I want to see what happens when I extract that signal out, let's go to the unmix icon here. Then, in the lower left, there's this little checkbox for autofluorescence as a fluorescent tag. When I check that, the software is going to extract autofluorescence as a parameter, so autofluorescence will appear in the drop-down list along with all these other dyes on my dot plot axes. I'm going to go ahead and click Next and tweak my gates a little here. You can see it was already unmixed once, so it's remembering the gate placements, and this is SpectraFlow version 2.1 that I'm working in. Okay, let me adjust the unstained, get that a little tighter on my lymphocytes. Then I don't want to live unmix right now because I want to keep the unmixing matrix in my original experiment that did not have autofluorescence extracted. So I'm going to go ahead and click the unmix, save, and open button. And what that's going to do is going to open a new experiment and it will have only unmixed data files in it. If I want to come back to the raw data files, I'll have to reopen that original experiment that I started with. So let's wait for that to unmix. Okay, now I've got my new experiment and you can see it added, it kept the original experiment name and appended this unmixed one to the end. And if you want to change that, feel free to double click up there and type in whatever naming scheme you'd like. I want to go and open up my 16 color analysis worksheet again. So I'm gonna click edit and go to my acquisition tab and in this last group here I want to relink that worksheet template that I had and save this. Okay and now you can see a lot of these populations have moved pretty far down right? I'm gonna have to rescale these plots here in order to see what's going on so I just selected all these plots and right clicked to get to my plot properties and under parameters, I'm going to adjust my manual y-axis scale. Maybe I'll go minus 1,000 and see what that looks like. Okay, looks like most of them need a little more, so I'm going to, need to go a little further. And let's see, maybe this one, I'll go even further to minus 3,000. Okay, so if I look back at those same two plots, Right now my bi-exponential scalings minus 3,000 and minus 2,000 for the y-axis. I can see that the negatives are now closer to zero on this Alexafluor 48 plot. And similar story for these monocytes. Let me just adjust my gate here. Um, the negatives have come down quite a bit. Let's go ahead and grab a screen capture of that so we can compare back to the other experiment file. I'm going to save this and then let's open up the other, the original experiment. Here we go. 
I go back to my 16 color tube. Let me just check my axis scaling here. So this one I want to match the scales so I can compare them accurately. This was minus 2000 on the Y and this one was minus 3000 on the Y. If I pull up my snipping tool, now I can compare side by side. So I've got this Alexafluor 488 here for the CD4 cell population. This is with autofluorescence not extracted. Then over here on the right, this is where I extracted autofluorescence. You can see that it's quite a shift in the negatives. Worked out pretty nicely. For the plot above it with the monocytes, again, this one over here on the left is with autofluorescence not extracted. The negatives are a little high up. And then over here on the right with it extracted, it made a little bit of a difference and pulled things down a little bit. Now if I put these other plots side by side and kind of check things out, it seems like everything else looks pretty good. So that's how you extract autofluorescence. And again, if you want to try it out on your data sets, remember first to check that unstained tube and see if its autofluorescence is high enough to merit extracting it in the first place. If that AF signal is pretty low, if everything's 10 to the third or less, don't bother. It'll do funny things to your negatives, and we can show you more troubleshooting tips on that in future tutorials. Thank you.